Hey, what's up guys? Chip here. And today I want to talk about this add-on called Flattener V1.2 released. And it's by Dr. Cy Bryn Stuvel. And we've been going back and forth on a Discord channel with me trying to understand how I can use this in a non-destructive way. And uh, this guy is pretty brilliant. If you've done any Python programming in Blender, you've probably heard of him. He's uh, does does these great courses and I really enjoy listening to uh, the way he talks. Just wonderful. Uh, when I looked at his product, I was having a real hard time understanding all of these uh, components and how they worked. And he helped explain some of that. And then I started playing around with it. And I think I have a way where you can actually use this in somewhat of a non-destructive way, which means you can build models and change the thickness of your material based on whatever it is that you're trying to laser cut. So for instance, if you're trying to cut a box that is, you know, an eighth of an inch thick versus a box that is a sixteenth of an inch thick, you'll be able to do that. So let me show you uh, kind of what we got uh, and how, how I'm using this currently. I'm not saying it's the correct way, the perfect correct way, but I, it seems to do the job. So let's take a look. So here we are in a blank Blender file with just a default cube in here. And here is the add-on called Flattener. It's in the Export tab over here on the In panel. And here's a cube. So what I want to do first is I am going to adjust the setup scene for millimeters. Okay, so now if I look at my item, this cube, you'll see that it's it's only two millimeters long. So I really kind of want this to be a little bigger. So I'm going to make it 200 millimeters. So, and I'll zoom out to get to it. So you can see there's there's the cube at 200 millimeters. and But I've got the scale, so I need to fix the scale. Okay, so now I'm back into here, and you see that we, he's got some presets here, like material thickness of three millimeters, shape padding of one millimeter, which is, I think, that's the shape packing. We'll keep this distance and padding around each shape. This is the shape, uh, this is the material width. I think this is the width of the, of the original material that you're wanting to cut on. So this is going to be a lot larger. So if this is 200 millimeters, maybe we ought to make this, let's just make it one, uh, or uh, one th thousand millimeters. Okay, I'll do that. So, and this up here is the width of the laser. So right now we're going to make a material thickness. Let's just do four for now. And let's say the width of the laser, even though it's not that, I'm going to say two. And the reason I'm going to say two is so that we can look and see how this actual add-on will modify the export for the earth or the width of the laser, which is important if you're trying to adjust a box so that when you press it together, it snap fits, it fits nice and snugly, you can adjust this number right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we want to create. So I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to just shrink this down to, uh, let's say, 0.5. And again, control eight, scale, set the scale. So there's there's our object and I'm going to go ahead and tab into this. And I'll, I'll, I'll just select these two faces right here and control I to invert the selection X uh, and delete the faces. So I'm just going to basically build this. And uh, assuming that if you know how to build this, you can build the rest of it. Okay. So, and I want to do it in a way that's non-destructive. So I can adjust the width, as I mentioned earlier. So the first thing I want to do is I'll tab out of this. And again, I want to make sure that my scale's at one here. And I'll notice I'm at 100, 200, 200. So I'll go in here and I'll say, add a solidify modifier. And it's going to use these numbers up here. So when I do that, there we have a solidify modifier. So that's our box. Uh, corner, but now I want to actually separate it into pieces. So I'm going to tab back into it, and with this still selected, I'm going to hit P, and I'll just select the selection and tab back out. So now you can see that we've got one, two different pieces here, right? So the next thing I want to do is, you know, with uh, in in your preferences on your add-ons, you know, look for bool tool. Make sure it's enabled, right, for this to work. So what I'll do is I'll go in here and here. I'm going to go into the edit menu right here. And this is a bull tool. And I'll go all the way down and I'll hit this slice. And so what the slice has done is it's actually created this little tiny little piece right here. It basically took the intersection of these two objects and created a piece. Now I want this to be solid again. So what I'll do is I'll control alt shift Z and it makes it solid. Why does it do that? Well, because I've got a little add on that I wrote uh, a while back, which is called toggle vp display it does a few things but it's a very simple little add-on you can download it. it comes with a free version of kit ops free or kit ops pro it comes with that or you know you can hit me up on discord and i'll send you a copy of it and no big deal but anyway it's just it's a real simple little add-on and it allows you to basically when you 
control alt shift z it'll go between wireframe bounding box the solid view now we have this done let's take this this little piece and let's scale uh s z and i'll go 0.5 so it's it's, it's just here actually actually let's do s z uh 0.5 again so we'll make it really tiny and so that's going to be a little uh, a little object and i can just move that down you know however i want to or if i want i can actually tab into it and edit it but before I do that, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to basically have to go in the object and I'll have to say relations make single user object in data. And then I can tab into this, hit A, and then shift D, Z, move, move one up like here, you know, something like maybe like this. And then A, let's just move them all down, something like so, whatever. So, uh, and, and you can do this more accurate way, but basically this, this will get the job done. So I've got this object and then I'm going to go to select this object last, and I'm going to go over here again into our bull tool, and I'll say difference. That gives us this product with the notches cut out of it, right? So if I hide this, you can see what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to take this object with the notches cut off out of it and select this and then this object, and I'm going to do the same thing, brush boolean difference. And that gives us this other one. And I'll go over here again. I'll use the toggle BP display and get those. So now I have two of these done. What I'll do is I'll select all three of these cubes, and I'll move them to a new collection, and I'm gonna call this just 3D. So this is gonna be my archival selection. And then I'll right, right click over here and say, duplicate collection, and I'm gonna call this one 2D. And I'm gonna turn off 3D, because I can come back and I can adjust that one later. And now that I'm in 2D, so now I'll select these two objects, and I'll go under object, and I'll say, apply, visual geometry to mesh for both of these. And now if I sit G, you'll see that basically you see what I've got. I've got both of these are now created with no modifiers. So there's no modifiers affecting these at all. And then this little one, this this little one here, you'll see it's kind of gone. So I'm gonna just X delete that. I don't need that anymore. So I've got these two now. So what I'll do is I'll select both of these, tab into them, select these two faces, this one and this one, control I to select the inverse faces, X to delete those faces, and now you can see what we have. Tab back out. Now go back into our export, and I'm gonna basically say, add solidify modifier again, and you'll see that this looks exactly like what we want. And the very next thing I need to do is say flatten to SVG outline. And let's go in here and let's uh, untitled SVG, flatten SVG outline. And now I'm gonna go into Affinity Designer. I'll say file, and you can do this with Inkscape or Illustrator as well. I just like it, I like Designer. So file, and we'll just say uh, open. And here's our untitled SVG. And there's our file. Let's go ahead. First thing I need to do is go in here and set this to, instead of pixels, we want it to be set to millimeters. Okay, and then I'll zoom out and hit A. And you can see we're, you know, kind of big. I'm gonna just go ahead and do this. Just make this a little larger. So now you can see this is our our objects. So I'll select these objects. So now with this set to millimeters, you can see this object right here is 202 by 202 millimeters. But if we go back to our, our Blender file, you'll see that this, the square object is 200 by 200 millimeters. So what's going on? Well, what's going on is that if we look at this, we actually added the perf width for this, which is two millimeters right here. So that added, you know, on each side that added uh, one half of that one millimeter and one millimeter makes it two. Same thing over here, we're at 102 by 202. So that's what it did, it adds those. So now that these guys, if we look at them, if I take this, move it over here and rotate it and zoom up and we'll see that, you'll see that, look, this is a little, this one's bigger by two millimeters, which is the kerth width that we were talking about. So obviously we, we exaggerated that because we wanted it to, to show the difference here, but uh, that's pretty cool. So let's go back in and let's adjust for a different wall thickness, right? So right now our wall thickness is at four millimeters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into this 2D, I'm gonna hide this, turn back on 3D. Uh, let's see this, let's make this eight millimeters. So now that I've done that, I can leave the, I'll leave the curve at two millimeters. So now I want to select this and make sure this solidifies at eight and that this solidifies at eight and that this solidify is at eight. So they're all at eight. So they should work just fine. And I'll just do the same thing I did before. Take this and say duplicate collection. And this one we're going to call 2D and we'll just call it 
eight millimeters width. And let's hide this one. So now we have just this one. And we'll just basically do the same thing. We'll select this one and this one, and we'll say object, apply visual geometry to mesh. Now we can go G and you see how that works. So, and then of course, from here, we just select both of these, tab into them, select these two faces right here, and then control I to invert the selection, then X and delete just the faces and then tab back out of it. Don't forget we have this one and we can just delete that. We don't need that anymore. And then we'll just take these two, add solidify modifier right here, and then flattened SVG outline. And let's call this one one. We'll swing back over to Affinity Designer, file, open. There it is. And zoom out. Sorry, we'll make it a little bigger, something like that. Okay. And make sure that we're using millimeters and check these out. So now we have 102, 202 that way, 102, 202. But notice that we have a thicker, thicker uh, item here. So if I take this and, you know, rotate it and drag it down, you see we, we, we still have that two millimeter kerth width, which is really too much, but now it still matches. It still fits into that, that object, that subject. So anyway, uh, that's really a cool workflow in my mind that allows you to create a model and then basically uh, create your SVGs with your Kurth width modify modifications just using a simple add-on. So it just uh, works great. Hope this is helpful and uh, we'll see you guys online.